John chapter 1, verse 1 to 18. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognise him. He came to that which was his own but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father full of grace and truth. John testified concerning him, He cried out, saying, This is the one I spoke about when I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. Out of his fullness we have all received grace in place of grace already given. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but the one and only Son, who is himself God, and who is in the closest relationship with the Father, has made him known. It's Christmas Eve and it's my final session and our final Advent devotion this year. It's been wonderful to be with you over the course of this month, um, studying and thinking and reflecting on all that Christmas means to us. My four sessions have focused on Jesus, the child of destiny, Jesus, the child of promise, got the word made flesh. And now today my title is God made manifest. You'll have heard the reading from John chapter 1. I want us to focus down to verse 16 through to 18, which says this. Out of his fullness, we have all received grace in place of grace already given. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but the one and only son who is himself God and is in the closest relationship with the father has made him known. As I've said, we've considered Jesus the child of destiny, the child of promise, God made flesh, and now on Christmas Eve, we're going to consider God made manifest. The world Jesus came into was no stranger to religion. His mission, his purpose was not to create another religion. The world had got plenty of that, and it certainly didn't need Jesus to come in order to add another. He wasn't there to create a political movement or a political party. But I believe we can see from the scripture that his purpose was simply to make God known. To a world that, like our own, was constantly imposing its views about God, using him as a weapon of political power, Jesus slipped in quietly and anonymously, not with an agenda or a manifesto, but just himself, full of grace and truth. Our first benefit from Jesus is not to learn, but to receive. Not to understand, but to encounter. Out of his fullness we have all received grace in place of grace already given. Another version, the one I'm used to reading, says grace upon grace. Everything we receive from him comes from an overflow from him, from his heart. He doesn't just demonstrate grace or teach grace, but he's the source of grace. And we live in that cascade coming down from him. We, we, are, we are overwhelmed with everything that comes from him. There is an endless supply that just flows out of him. He is full of grace and truth and we all receive from him. The law was given through Moses and the effects were seen over generations 
and are still seen up to today. No righteousness, no peace, no fulfilment, just a crushing record of failure, generation upon generation. And now Jesus has come. God made manifest. And that which we were trying to attain through the law is now poured out on us by grace. We were desperately like crawling in the desert looking for a drop of water. And now Jesus comes, the source of living water, poured out in our life. No one has ever seen God, but the one and only Son, who is himself God, and is in the closest relationship with the Father, has made him known. That is why Jesus is key. That's why we can't have a vague faith that simply believes in God and tries hard to reach him. That's why nothing makes sense without Jesus. That's why we celebrate Christmas, not as a pious festival, but as a full-throated celebration of the fact that through nothing we have done, God himself not only reached out to us, but made himself manifest that we might see him, feel him, experience him in three-dimensional reality. The Bible talks about that which our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, our hands have touched. This we proclaim to you. God made manifest. Not only can we know about him, we can experience him. Not only do we understand about his coming, but he's present in our lives amongst us that the evidence of his coming, the evidence of his nativity, of his advent is felt in our everyday lives. Emmanuel, God with us, means that Christmas is not a historical event, but a present reality. God is made manifest amongst us. Three dimensional reality. People say, if only I could see God, then I would believe in him. Jesus has made God known. Jesus is the means by which God is made known. Jesus is the only bridge to God. I am the way, the truth and the life, he said, and no one comes to the Father except through me. It's not a threat. It's an explanation. This is the reality. No one comes to the Father except through me. The world is full of faith, as I've said. The world is full of religion. The world is full of ex expectations and expressions of religious lifestyle. But there is ultimately only one expression of the true and living God. And his name is Jesus. I am the way, the truth and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. Christmas is God's arrival amongst us, his expression amongst us, and the reminder that things have changed and will never be the same. I wish you and yours all the very best this Christmas season, and that God himself will be made manifest in your life in such a real and tangible way and that you'll never be the same, and your future and that of those around you will be transformed as a result. God richly bless you. Thank you. Father, as we come to the end of our Advent season, we just thank you so much for your grace made manifest in our lives. Thank you for the reality of who you are. Thank you that we are now witnesses of that reality because of Christmas, because of the coming of Jesus, because of the word made flesh and God made manifest amongst us. Thank you for the fact that our experience is not just an intellectual one but it's an emotional one it's a physical one it's one that we that 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 we can embrace with all of our being that you have made yourself known to us 
not just in a one-off moment, but forever. Your promise is to be with us forever. Lord God, give us the grace that we might be able to lift up our heads even when our hearts drag us down, even when our minds tell us that you're not there. Lord God, cause us to be those who lift up our heads and see you every day of our lives, that live in the goodness of God made manifest amongst us. Thank you for all that it means to us and all that you are to us. We are so grateful. We love you and we worship you. In Jesus' name, amen.